Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. Transhumanism, or the use of technology to enhance ourselves and overcome our limitations, is a subject that intrigues us here at Seven Realms. Well, you know, some people might say that our animal frailty are part of what makes us human. But that's stupid. Charming. Today's subject follows this concept further down the rabbit hole than most products have the gumption to. For your consideration, this is Eclipse Phase by Posthuman Studios. As the flare rounds rip through your morphs, you have a bare instant to reflect that the Nine Lives Syndicate must have been expecting you. Damn it! Total party kill. No, it's another game over. Well, not exactly. See, the Firewall organization took their liberty of having you all re-sleeved into readily available morphs. They apparently want you to have another go at the mission. I forgot how cool it was to be immortal. What kind of body did I get? I want to get back to busting heads as soon as possible. Looks like you've been sleeved in a neotenic morph. You're about three feet high, maybe 50 pounds. Uh, the little kids that never grow up? I won't even be able to lift my gun. What was I sleeved by Henry Darger? Settle down and dream of Neverland, Tiny Avenger. I'm sure to leave it out. What did I get? Actually, you're in an uplifted octomorph. You're having a little trouble figuring out what to do with the four extra limbs, but you think you'll get the hang of it eventually. Firewall does know I'm the face man, right? The suave social manipulator? Oh, and the, uh, the hacker is slaved into a modified Nova Crab. It's roomy, but you're finding the whole not having fingers thing kind of inconvenient. Are you doing this intentionally? Are you just screwing with us? No, of course not. No. Maybe. The story of Eclipse Phase begins with humanity making one of the great classic blunders. They got involved in a land war in Asia? They went in against the Sicilian when death was on the line? Close. We built a dozen giant intelligent defense computers called the Titans, then plugged them into the worldwide network. Then we somehow had the audacity to be surprised when it took exactly two seconds for them to decide to wipe us out. This was called The Fall, and took the form of them launching a multi-vector biological, chemical, nuclear, nanotechnological, plus the kitchen sink assault, forcing mankind to abandon its home world. Then, without warning or explanation, the Titans disappeared. They left behind no clue to their current whereabouts and a series of portals that make interstellar travel possible. They call them Pandora Gates. The current setting is built on the ruins of this. Humanity has moved on from its roots and become a maraud of strange creatures. Technology allows a person to upload their consciousness, storing backups and re-sleeving into different bodies adapted for different environments and purposes. Beyond that, nanofabrication has made hunger and resource shortages things of the past. Virtually anything can be simply nano-assembled from common raw materials, and scarcity is no longer a concept. Parts of the inner system still maintain the old economic style to create economic disparity. It turns out that immortality doesn't make rich people any less interested in making damn sure that there are still poor people for them to feel superior to. While most places now go by a reputation or networking exchange, the new hotness hasn't solved all of our problems. However, it has changed the entire shape of transhuman society. Various factions have arisen, each with a different idea of what the new face of mankind should look like. Some visions are more radical and disturbing than others. And then there's the fact that the Titans weren't actually defeated. No one knows where they went or when they might decide to come back and finish what they started. Welcome to Eclipse Phase. The singularity just isn't what it used to be. Alright, I'm back, and uh, you're out of soda. So what did I miss? Uh, well... I have no words for how weird this is. Just drink it in. Alright, you schlubs, here's the plan. You go left and flank. Me, me, and me will go on a frontal assault. Hey, what if I go right and lay down suppressive fire? Good idea, Alpha Me. You know, you are quickly becoming my second favorite me. Hey, we talked about this, Beta Me. If you want your creator's love, you're gonna have to contribute. Alpha Me is just more of a go-getter. Alpha Me, Beta Me? What the hell did you do? I forked my consciousness into the two synth morphs that we captured. Alpha and Beta are the copies. I like to think of the original as, uh, me prime. Whatever. If you're done playing with yourself, we're on a bit of a deadline here. Come on, me brigade, it's time to rock and roll. Me style. Do you even listen to yourself? Going forward, I'm not gonna listen to anybody else. Eclipse Phase uses a proprietary engine. At its core, it's a percentile roll-under system. The sheer scope of the setting means that the engine has to cover a lot of possibilities. Everything from basic skills to physical combat to computer systems is handled more or less the same way. It's a crunchy chart and modifier kind of affair, and it definitely has a bit of a learning curve. 
It's the sort of game that will reward players who read deeply into the various systems, get a solid handle on exactly how everything works, and get creative with the various tech and modifications available. Due to the nature of transhuman existence, characters are defined by two very different aspects. The system allows the players to customize both elements extensively. The ego is the crux of the character, the skills, memories, and personality, and is the part that gains experience and grows. The morph is the physical body. It can be a living organism, a robotic shell, or even a construct of pure information. A character might even have many bodies for different occasions. One of the greatest strengths of the morph system, in my opinion, is the inclusion of morphs like the pleasure pod. Despite its name, there are communities that use the gender fluid pods to teach their children about gender identity and how to live outside of a binary construct. Combat is unflinchingly deadly, modeling futuristic weaponry with lethal realism. Because a character can expect to sleeve into a new body, death isn't necessarily the end of the line. Getting killed might cost you a couple of days, but as long as you can afford to sleeve into a new morph, you're pretty much free to just Dark Souls your way around the solar system to your heart's content. You quickly discover why that hostage was quarantined as it infects you with the exurgent virus. Your friends stare, horrified, as your flesh ripples and twists under its assault. You feel yourself becoming something other. Great. First you kill my clones and ruin my whole triple threat thing, and now I'm baby's first Cronenberg. This just keeps getting more and more fun. Your senses shift and warp as strange alien thoughts swirl through your brain. The urge to kill the, the weak, fleshy creatures before you becomes more and more irresistible. Well, it's obvious where this is going. I know, right? I'm a shooter. What? I open up with my SMG, all I write for her creepy little kid face. Assuming she still has one. Aren't you being a little blasé here? I mean, that's your friend and teammate that you're watching degenerate into a hideous Lovecraftian abomination. Uh, she has uninfected backup. She'll be fine. He's right. He should totally shoot me. Hey, maybe he'll get a better body. See, even Commando Skipper's on board. That's the only reasonable course of action, really. Don't worry, buddy. We can age it. <gasps> Tattoo! Canina! Tattoo! Unbelievable. Okay, shut up. All of you take 2d10 points of mental stress. If you're actually pulling the trigger on your buddy, it's 2d10 plus 5. Huh. Apparently, I am now an uplifted Octomorph that is fuck fuck crazy. What a rip. Don't sweat it. I'll just come because of the team. Our backups are made pre mind fuck. Hey, this mission's already accomplished. He's right. Suicide is an instant trip home. Sometimes I think the Titans have the right idea. Something you'll notice almost immediately about Eclipse Phase is that it doesn't pitch rockets and rayguns science fantasy. Instead, the game presents a sleek, sophisticated, modern take on speculative technology. It also contains some thought-provoking ideas on societal and cultural evolution, such as the example I gave earlier. What does race or gender mean to body-swapping immortals? Is an artificial intelligence or an uplifted animal human? How do you define human in the first place? How far from the norm is too far? Is there such a thing as too far? Barring travel through the poorly understood Pandora gates, the setting is limited to the solar system. But that doesn't feel restrictive here. From isolationist habitats scattered to the farthest edge of the system to the specialized whale-like morphs designed to live comfortably in the corona of the sun, transhumanity has found a way to expand, evolve, and thrive. I have a lot of good things to say about this game, but we did find that the engine is a bit too reliant on charts and modifiers, and that the odd roll under but highest roll that doesn't fail wins mechanic did trip us up a bit at first. That's my biggest beef. I don't feel the system is poor, but I've seen better. But there is something about it that just kind of rubs me the wrong way. It's probably the weird price is right thing, where you have to roll as high as you can without going over your score. Yeah, something about that just doesn't sit well with me. It's still not a bad system, and it is far from a deal breaker. I'll agree, it's not a perfect rule set, but the ideas and setting are well worth dealing with its foibles. And to be fair, it has a lot of ground to cover. The rules are a bit complex, but it's a great game if you're into hard sci-fi. Roleplay Roulette recommends Eclipse Phase. Feel free to click like and check the description below for links to the game. Thanks for watching. Once again, thanks for watching our review of Eclipse Phase. We really enjoyed it. We really want you to check it out because we hope that you like it too. Feel free to hit that subscribe button and absolutely feel free to hit that like button because it lets YouTube know that we're doing a good job and lets us know that you like what we're doing. We like to do stuff that you like because we uh. like you because you're our favoriteest watcher in the whole wide world. We'll catch you next time. This is the part where I slowly zoom in on Jacqueline.
no. Because you know what I'm doing, and I'm right up in your face <laughs> right now. 